Campiel.ca newsroom for this week. Marty Thompson and Charlie O'Connor Clark back with you as we anxiously prepare for the 2021 CPL season. Now, still nothing official, but something from this week that caught both of our eyes, Charlie, is how quickly some of these teams are moving on signing players. York, yeah. we'll get to them. They, they've 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 completed their 2021 roster. Um, and then Valor's made a big signing. There's been some there's been some movement, so that maybe gives us a hint as to what's coming. Uh, again, David Klanikin saying last month that the CPO will be trying to go for a single site start and then hopefully go back into stadiums, hopefully with fans at some point. So with that being said, let's take a look at some of these player signings because they're pretty significant. For Valor, Rafael mm-hmm. Gallar- uh, Gallardo, right. Um, Gallardo? Gallardo. Gallardo. <laughs> Gallardo. <laughs> Sorry, it's uh, it, it's 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 early here. Um, former <laughs> Brazilian top flight player, Brazilian youth international. Like, give us like a bit of a taste of of what he's going to bring to Winnipeg here. Uh, a lot of silverware apparently. <laughs> um, he's a uh, he's got a pretty impressive resume. He's played for I think some of some of the biggest clubs in Brazil. I mean, he's played for Grêmio. He played for Flamengo and and Santos. Uh. He, I think maybe the biggest thing that that you you should probably put at the top of the at the top of the list here is that this guy was in the Brazilian league's team of the year in 2015, which I mean you have to be uh, kind of remarkable to to do, and I mean it's not that long ago. It's not that long. I think he's he's 29, so it's not yeah. like he's like just some. He's not some over the hill guy coming here to. I don't know. See out his career. He's he's still a very ca- talented football player. He won the under twenty World Cup in twenty eleven with uh, with Brazil. Uh, I think he he had some pretty crazy guys in that team, like Casemiro and Philip Coutinho on his team. And I think he was going up against. Uh, oh, I can't even remember who was on the Canadian team at that World Cup. <laughs> uh, but I think I think that was like the Kevin Alleman kind of years. Right. Interesting. <laughs> um, I mean, that maybe maybe reconnected a Valor. That'd be interesting. Actually, yeah, that's 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 a very <laughs> good point. But anyway, uh, yeah, Gallardo. I mean, anybody who's played significant games in the Brazilian top flight is probably going to do pretty well at this level, especially a guy like him who's apparently done really well at that level. I mean, he he had a brief brief stint over at Anderlecht in Belgium, didn't seem to have worked out, so he went back to Brazil. Uh, yeah. I, I I don't know how Valor got this guy because he uh, he looks really good. Well, and and, and so he's and something we haven't even mentioned. He's played uh, played fullback for his entire career, mm-hmm. from what we can tell, for the most part, anyways. But you know, Valor coach Rob Gale yesterday after he signed, he's saying, "Hey, look, you know, we see he could play a six, an eight, a ten in midfield." Uh, which is which is interesting to hear. Um, maybe the question is like, you know, if you have a quality player like this, regardless of position, which position do you think um, Valor could 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 use a player like this? Yeah, it's definitely an interesting one because when I too first uh, first saw the signing, I'm like, okay, this guy's been a right back his whole career, and I'm not sure if that's exactly what Valor needed. But uh, yeah, according to Rob Gale, this guy he's going to play midfield for them. Uh, and that's probably a position that they do need. I mean, especially now that we've heard that that obviously Nestor Mange isn't going to make it into the into the country for this season. Uh, this certainly fills that need. You know that that void that was left. And uh, I, I I still I'm not really sure what exactly to expect from a guy like Gallardo, but he's got the experience and and the technical ability probably to play most positions uh, for Valor. So I think. I think really, even though it's it's late in the process, uh, it's going to be maybe in their best interest to build a lot of the way they play around a player like him. And it looks like he'll be able to get to Winnipeg uh, sometime in the next two weeks. I think the date was June 16th uh, that Valor suggested mm-hmm. he'd be able to get to Winnipeg. Uh, okay, so York completed their their 2021 roster so to speak so formally ruling out for the international players that they had signed uh including william wallace uh a player that we got a lot of traction on in this and on this very podcast <laughs> and i'm sad to see him leave just before the euros 
Um, but they're bringing in a couple of domestic players and players that are, you know, frankly able to get into the country uh, as the visa, visa issues persist. Um, four players, Tariq Muhammad, formerly of FC Edmonton, and then obviously through the to the Toronto FC uh, setup was was sort of the big signing that people would know on loan uh, from Dundalk. But like, what other players here that uh, that really stick out to you? Yeah, uh, I mean, obviously, yeah, Muhammad's kind of the one that the name that everybody would know the best. Uh, Jordan Faria is, I think, another name that's been around, especially Ontario soccer, for a few years now. He was playing in the the TFC Academy in, in Toronto FC two for at least a couple of years, and I think he's been uh, at at the kind of a, a bunch of different national team camps for various age levels. So I think he's just a name that would be familiar to anybody that's been paying really close attention to this sort of thing. Um, I, I, however many people that might be. <laughs> but uh, well, he, yeah, he's been and he's been a name just in the back channels that have been yeah. talk, that's been talked about. The yeah. CPL what I'm saying while. is it's a familiar name to me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. Understood. <laughs> Moving on. Um, so yeah, I uh, know he's he's a good midfielder from from a level that that works pretty well in in the CPL. Uh, Gerard Levan sounds like a very fascinating player and maybe maybe the most interesting of the bunch here. He's played nine games for the Dominican national team, senior national team, that is. Um, looks like he's, he's been really good at that level. Uh, he, he could be a pretty a pretty important player. I feel like it's it's a little bit of a, a quick move to come in here. I, I think, unless I'm wrong, I think he's coming from the club that had two of York's players on loan down in the Dominican. That recently am I wrong to, about to that? Costa Rica. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, Hernandez and, and Cabrera, right? Yeah. And you've kind of hit I the nail on the so. head, though, with like coming coming to Canada and coming into a team this quickly, because this is something that, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, Cabrera and Hernandez are now gone to, um, have now gone to uh, a Costa Rican side. Like, again, another interesting point of the season where it's like, yeah, I guess the question is when you're coming in this late, what kind of impact can you make, really? And and yeah. I mean, it's really just comes down to the players, I suppose. The other, the striker, Osvaldo Ramirez, also seems like an interesting uh, pickup. Um, who do you think is going to make the the biggest impact out of this group? Um, I I think I think maybe the the potential is there for Laverne to make the biggest impact. I just just remembered as well. He he just played his most recent football for Tucson in, in USL League One. That's what I was oh, yeah, missing, right. but uh. Yeah, I think that's maybe where the most potential is, but I think if you're if you're to make a prediction, it would probably be Tariq Muhammad, just because he has played at the CPL level before. He's played obviously TFC two for a really long time. Uh, he's been over at Dundalk in, in Ireland, and he's still on loan there uh, from mm-hmm. there, I should say. Um, and at the the left back position, I mean York obviously has some depth at the fullback position, but maybe less so than they do in midfield. So that might be a better place for him to get into the side and get minutes and, and make more of an impact. So I think if, if you were going to make the safe pick for which of these guys is going to have the biggest impact, it would probably be Muhammad. And yeah, quite good for FC Edmonton at the Island games. Quite good. Mm-hmm. Okay, Canadian men's national team, uh, two important qualifiers, World Cup qualifiers, and then hopefully, fingers crossed, another two following that in the next, I don't know, like 12, 13 days. There's going to be a lot of Canada games coming up uh, for both yeah. the men's and the women's sides. Uh, we haven't had a chance to talk about the squad that got uh, that got picked for Aruba, Suriname, and then potentially the second round two-legged tie. Um, maybe just quick highlights on this. Like I know Atiba uh, couldn't make it due to injury. Daniel Henry was uh, maybe not a surprise, but a, a welcome addition to this team. Like, what did you make of the squad that Herman picked here last uh, last week? Yeah, there's not a ton of surprises. I think there's maybe a few more players missing to injury and so forth that than I might have expected. Uh, I mean, I think I think Kamal Miller is missing out on injury. Uh, I'm a little surprised that Derek Cornelius isn't in the squad. I actually still haven't yet been able to figure out exactly why. Um, but yeah, Daniil Henry's back. I think that's going to be really important. And, and I think he's going to want to take this opportunity to maybe establish himself or, or remind us of where he actually should be in, in terms of 
center backs on this team. Um, mm-hmm. For the most part, though, I think I think the the starting eleven, maybe thirteen, starting thirteen, and you pick eleven from that for for the Suriname game is probably pretty set in stone. But uh, it'll be interesting looking at maybe the Aruba game to see if if maybe a few of these players. I mean, I think Dijon Buchanan and, and Scott Kennedy coming in for their first camps, maybe they get their first looks. Uh, but I think for the most part, it's not a particularly experimental or or different men's national team squad to what we what we saw in March or or what we might have expected. Well, the tricky part. So Aruba's coming up on Saturday, uh, Saturday night on one soccer, and then the the Suriname game, which will obviously be the the big one, considering you know how much we've talked about uh, mm-hmm. their squad will come on Tuesday. Um, but it is kind of interesting how you play Aruba, you know, who's ranked I think two hundred and sixth. It's the biggest gap in, in 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 rankings, anyways, in in this group, and then you have to go in and play those more important games. So, uh, yeah, I, I think squad rotation would definitely be expected on Saturday. Which leads us into our final segment of the day: men's national team predictions. Charlie, we're gonna. Oh God, Charlie, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna burn you here. We're gonna bring this up next week. Okay, so you mentioned Buchanan and Scott Kennedy. So this is yeah, this is their first full senior camps proper. Will they mm-hmm. both earn starts? Hmm. Both of them. I Scott Kennedy. Think I'm going to say Tejon Buchanan. No a to both of them. I'm going to say no to both of them. I think Kennedy could start in the Aruba game, but I don't think Buchanan will. Because I think I think if you're starting starting different wingers, trying to mix it up a little bit, I think Corbiano is first off the off the list there. I think I think yeah, Corbiano gets a start against Aruba, and then I think maybe you probably still throw in a Liam Miller or a, even a Junior Hoylet into mm. into that spot. So I think I think Buchanan does play in that game off the bench, but I don't think he gets a start just yet. Okay. Uh over under 7 goals against Aruba for Canada. Hmm. Cayman Islands was 11 and that was a record yeah. for the program. I'm going to say <laughs> under. Cuz really? I think uh, I am going to say under. I think it's obviously not going to be as I don't think it's going to be as strong a starting 11 as Canada put out against the Caymans. And I think once they're well in front, maybe four, five goals or so, they maybe ease off the gas a little bit. Just anybody who might have any opportunity of playing in one of the next few games, I mean, get them off the pitch. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think, obviously, no, I mean, I'm not trying to disrespect Aruba, but uh, you really have to look ahead to that Suriname game. Uh, and you, I, I really think that hopefully by halftime of this Aruba game, they will be fully looking ahead to that next game, but and yeah, already up by like four goals or so. Yeah, it is just again like yeah, the the Suriname and then the the two uh, the two second round games coming up, and those are those will all come very quickly, and those are all incredible, obviously incredibly important. Um, so mm-hmm. yeah, just something to keep in mind here for Canada going into that one. But after the Suriname game, do you think this is another prediction? Do you think that we'll go back and sort of say there's maybe too much hype about this team, or will we say it was maybe justified? Hmm. Too much hype or justified? I think, <laughs> I think immediately after the game. Oh, I don't I don't like doing this. I really don't like this. But I think after the game, <laughs> we are going to think that it was a little overhyped. Because I yeah. I I'm being confident, I'm being optimistic, and I believe in his Canada squad. And I think they're going to handle them reasonably well. Um, and yeah, I think I think maybe the thing about Suriname is they will be a genuine, terrifying threat two years from now, right? Or even even in the next World Cup qualifying cycle. I don't know if they're going to be there yet because these guys just haven't played together at all. Uh, some of their best players will be making their debuts in in this camp. Um, so yeah, I th- I think we're not overhyping the program and the potential of this team, but we might be overhyping their ability to to truly challenge Canada the way that things are at the moment. Of course, I really hope I'm not, you know, messing with any any 
bad luck Canadian or anything soccer. like that. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Canadian it soccer. It is Canadian vibes. soccer, and Lord knows it's. Uh, <laughs> Lord knows Canada hasn't always done things that they're they've been supposed to do, but <laughs> but that's why we I love think, it. I think I think no choice but to be positive here. I think we're in a new era of this national team. I think they're going to be okay. And a, and a score line against Surinam. Three one. That's what I was saying too. Three one for Canada. Yeah, yeah. That 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 seems reasonable, right? Yeah, I, I, yeah. Like, I feel it, good. It was feel it was funny. Good. I was. I was checking out some uh, some surname uh, vlogs about this Canada team. Don't ask me why I was doing that last night. Uh, and the <laughs> the host and the host was host said host thought Canada was going to be a lot worse. He he came away from so like looking at the squad, being like, actually, you know what, this squad's pretty good. So I mm. mean, well, every, everyone has their everyone has their point of view, I guess, for for national teams. So I was like, all right, yeah, fair enough. I guess I guess I think Canada's better than surname, but I guess you think surname's better than Canada. So. <laughs> all entitled to yep. our opinions all right so uh we'll that's that's it for us this week a, a short episode and again fingers crossed hopefully we'll have something on the 2021 canadian premier league season coming up uh again hopefully next week you know it, it's 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 coming right up to it you know we know we we know people are itching to go and we are as well so we just want games to talk about we want games to talk yep. about <laughs> okay <laughs> that being said see you next week